started. Yay. Okay, let's make sure everything's kind of going on. Okay. Looks like YouTube's starting up. Let's see. Twitch. I have to watch a little commercial. Kind of do it. Let's see. And I'm not too sure on Facebook quite yet if it's starting. Wait for a few people to do it. Hey, Pablo, welcome. You're the first. So I'm not seeing any. Let's see. Greetings, hopefully you guys can see me. Okay, there it goes. Or a second there, it just was not showing me updates. How's it going? Zambigli Zambiglioni. It's a hard name. Hopefully you guys can hear me pretty well. Let me double check. Okay, sounds working on that one. Twitch is still not starting for some reason. Let's refresh it, make sure it's kind of going. Now I gotta watch a commercial. So, how's Zerfa? How's it going? Thank you guys for joining today. We're gonna let um, some people join in before I kind of get going. Make sure everything's working fairly well. Audio is good and clear. Thank you for that. I had um, some issues with the uh, um, audio not really working. I guess some people were saying it was cutting in and out. I think it's because. Uh, it took over. So it looks like Twitch. Let me double check in. Audio. Okay. Good, good, good. Looks like it's all good to go. Hey, George. How's it going, buddy? Thank you for stopping by. Um, let me go ahead and just see what you guys are kind of seeing. Um, today is going to be episode 18. Can't believe I've already done 18 of these guys. I appreciate everybody kind of sticking in uh, with them. It's uh, until we get some more people popping in. I'm just going to go through the normal stuff. My name is Brett Briley. Uh, you can find my work at www.bbriley.com. Um, pretty much I've been in the game industry for about 20 years uh, and uh, done a lot of different things. So uh, this is my home where you can kind of find some of the different stuff about me in case you're interested. I do have a shop where I am selling my kits. Uh, you should also... Uh, um, you know, visit that if you're interested. I plan on doing a lot of stuff. I pretty much been doing digital, and with the access of 3D printing and stuff, I'm able to kind of create. I have a few of them. I also did some T-shirts and some other stickers just for fun. Um, the about section, you can actually, if it works, might be taking a little bit of time. About section, there it goes. Uh, you can connect to me through my Facebook. Uh, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the kind of stuff is here and some of the clients I worked with and some of the few titles um, that I was able to, to list. Um, and then my work, you can find my 2D work, uh, 3D work, etc. through here. I'm trying to get 360 degree spins. This is something that's kind of coming. It's not quite working quite well. I'm going to be switching over. This is where you can actually view um, some of the 3D prints I've kind of created and turned around. Um, still there. Press. This is some of my um, YouTube videos as well that you can kind of link into and some further thing to contact me you can contact me through here or um, uh, through a couple of my different emails uh, hey Ben thanks man <laughs> yeah that was for my son I wanted to do it uh, hi Claudia how are B how's it going uh, you could also find my work at uh, artstation.com forward slash spark um, although I, I have need to update it a little bit more some of the different um, a range of the games and items I've done. Also, uh, at Instagram.com forward slash bbriley underscore art. Um, this is where I've been showing a lot more of my 3D printing and some of the different processes and kind of helping out anybody um, because it's kind of a long process. It's quite a big deal to get stuff going. I do have the Form 2 uh, from Form Lime's a great printer. Um, I also work with a group of guys, uh, James King and Martin Verhoeven, talented guys. Together we're Grimm, um, and you can find us at www.wearegrimm.com. Uh, this is where we kind of got together 
uh, with our different stuff and different kits. Like this is a kit from James Kane. This is Martin Verhoeven's, so on. Uh, and you can read more about us. Also, link to our Instagram um, and our shop. So, sorry for the shameless plug as people kind of pull in. I'm just going to kind of go through. Uh, and these are some of the different kits that we have available. We do have some more coming, so the next one, hopefully, I should be able to kind of show you guys. And then our work is going to be um, just the combined work from the, uh, all of us. And press some of the different titles, some of the different stuff. We've got to kind of clean that up. Contact. We also have Instagram, so we do appreciate you guys dropping by and adding us at uh, Instagram.com forward slash We Are Grim, um, where you can kind of see all the different works from our Facebooks and stuff to get it together. Hey, Vig, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Hey, what's up, side effects and Mo Mosin? How's it going? Um, also, just to let you guys know, I'm sure you've kind of heard, I wanted to update that um, uh, ZBrush will be updating um, March 5th with the new 2009 I have uh, I was in the beta so um, some really cool stuff coming I think you guys will like it so uh, you'll be able to check in hey Mikael congrats man welcome to it some great artists in here um, uh, so yeah and you'll be able to see uh, they're doing every 15 minutes you can kind of check it Marco uh, Marcel whatever some great stuff I wish they had it to where you could actually just cycle through everything they kind of shown because there was a lot of great work um, so um, just check it out March 5th download it it's it's a, it's a pretty cool thing coming so enough with that let me go ahead and get on to the day of what I'm going to be doing um, I'm going to go ahead and just continue with just the heads uh, for those of you guys uh, don't know I wanted to kind of show some more exploration and just concepting just having fun for those of you guys who are new um, into ZBrush I try to everything is basic I have basic brushes everything else just to make it simple for someone starting or just to sit there and just think outside of the box and just relax and not be um, you know too overly concerned with where's what button with everything else so more of my videos are concerning you know concerning just the fact that it's just fun concepting thinking of stuff throwing things together and relaxing so that's how art should be it shouldn't be stressful or whatever so um, all I've done with this uh, is I just took a scanned uh, head um, I had mirrored it and flipped it um, just to sit there and uh, make it symmetrical and just did a re um to break it down to go into different levels because um, it's very important to have levels on your pieces so you can actually make sure that your base forms are filled out your your bottom forms then you go to your mids and then you do your tertiary high details on top a lot of people will just go straight to the high level while they're creating and it just causes a lot of issues so I'm going to just go ahead and start um, today. Most of my brushes are just simple brushes. I have them on hotkeys, so I, am, I just use my standard, my move brush, trim dynamic, which is great for flattening and, and adding some details. Um, pinch, gr uh, clay, uh, in flat, dam standard, um, and then I'll, I'll show you how to, uh, I'll probably add one more, because today I'm probably going to go over just a little bit of hard surface, just some of because um, I'm going to probably do alien, but I'm going to add some hard surface to the organic instead of just thinking uh, the materials. How's it going, Craig? Thanks for joining. Hey, Vimal. How's it going, buddy? Another phenomenal talent. Yeah, a lot of you guys that are um, uh, just in the thread that are beginners or students, uh, look at some of the names that come through here. I try to call off a lot of the artists that I respect and are, are solid. Just look them up. Because um, some names are kind of hard for me to pronounce, um, and I just know them by their <laughs> just general name. But that way, you can kind of learn from them as well, uh, which is important. So, all right, let me get to uh, the day. And if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and you know drop me uh, during the time I'm talking. Let's just go ahead and just um, you know talk, ask questions. Let me know. So on this one, I'm just going to just kind of again push out the forms. Most of, of what I start out with um, on when I'm doing an alien uh, and the fact that we're just working with the actor uh, digitally from a scan face you can you can dig in which on a real life actor you have to build clay on and you can't really dig into it so um, uh, that's the benefit I would say that you know doing this um, within ZBrush and stuff. So I'm going to keep all, I think, all the senses of the character. I'm going to kind of just um, 
go ahead and make sure that this is going to be an alien, but it's going to have its mouth, it's going to have a nose, it's going to have quite a few things that makes it human. So I'm going to be more of a non-odd creature, because if I take out um, senses such as the eyes or or um, the ears or whatever, that sort of reduces just some of what um, the character could be. But taking that ear, making it to where it's a little bit... Um, it looks like an ear, but it might kind of have like a little bit of odd shapes to it or a different type of flow that's going to change that character or taking the uh, jawline and kind of change it and just going to you know do that as well um, let me go ahead and take it off the frame uh, by the way this right here the draw poly that just actually shows the frame of the breakdown of what I'm doing like um, as you see the quad so this is my lowest one uh, so this is the quadded form and every single layer will just add four to that quad and you can just turn on the line or turn it off or turn out the fill if you don't want the color, if you just want to see or keep both on lawn and F, uh, shift F is the way to kind of do that. Um, so, good Craig, appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I try to I try to keep things basic in Zebra so you guys can just kind of slowly figure it out and uh, not, you know, not keep freaking out about certain things like how, how does this work or where did the... I mean, I've watched friends of mine, and I'm like, how the, how did they do that? Because it's like they have a hotkey or a button, and I'm just trying to figure out what exactly did they do. Um, so that's where I like to kind of keep things. Uh, so where people are watching the videos, um, not doing anything drastic or, or hiding or figuring out what's going on. Um, so I think I'm going to give this guy like an extra nostril, like a nostril within a nostril. Um to give a little bit of that oddity, but he's still kind of going to be an alien. And let's bring this down. I'm going to keep the mouth, but maybe push in. And let's define that cheekbone. And by keeping really low, I'm able to sit there and just. Um, I'm able to sit there and just kind of play with the shapes, seeing what I want. Probably going to raise this head up a little bit and try to think of like, you know, you know, buttons are not working. Oh, and last episode I had a problem where it was like um, uh, freaking out on me, and that's because before, right before I came on, I spilled some water on the keyboard, which just lets you know is not a good way to go. Uh, so I was, that's why my. Uh, stuff was kind of freaking out because I actually was not not able to go underneath my computer and rip it out and um, in the time for the show so all I'm doing now is just kind of using my move tool you can actually see up in here on my brushes as you see I'm kind of flipping around you can see what brush um, I'm going with and how I'm doing it because I'm just kind of pulling out this guy's head and neck and I'm going to just try to get some of the shape going of what I want. I'm not going to do too much uh, for now because I'm going to bring in other other kind of stuff. Um, I'm glad to hear it. side effects. I'm happy to help out as much as possible. So when I'm looking um, for the shapes, I'm just going to be kind of like debating what is going to be good for the character, what can kind of showcase some of the different shapes. Um, I want to kind of have like a, a lot of sweeps or motions or uh, things that are flowing through the character. I try to create a interesting shape that I, I start on one. So if like let's say if I had the eye going here and I'm sweeping around, let's bring it up. Um, I, I try to um, have the eye move around um, quite a bit within your uh, in your piece. So that way it's kind of flowing. So if I'm going to do something up here, if I go up a little bit higher, so if I have the shape, I'm going to kind of flow down around and, and I'm kind of leading, trying to lead the eye. So let's say I'm going to lead the eye down here more. Um, let's kind of make this cavity. And So I'm kind of looking for things and shapes and flows 
and by using the skin or or effects of uh, the brush, the fat, all that kind of stuff, it kind of it helps you create the character. So right now, if I have this high cheekbone, um, goes into the side here. Who's to say it's not going to have any kind of design or split? Um, they should make underwear digital sculpting with waterproof equipment. <laughs> you had to go. That'd be kind of. I don't know if I could breathe long enough to do a full episode. Um, but as I'm as I'm starting to kind of get the shape of the character, uh, you know, I told you I want to kind of bring in some more mechanical. Um, objects and stuff like that uh, to kind of help balance. Um, a lot of times I'll just bring in a sphere and I'll just start playing with the sphere itself, work with it. Whenever you bring in a new sphere, you it's not going to come in with symmetry on so make sure you have symmetry. Uh, I'm just turning the gizmo to kind of maybe make it a little bit fatter. Um, it already kind of has, you know, its own stuff on it. It's not really... Uh, a true sphere. It's got because it comes to a point. If if I want to sit there and go, okay, I'm gonna I want to clean this thing up. I could I could go a couple different ways about it. Uh, I'm gonna come down down here to the bottom to initialize, and within here you have um, Q cube, Q sphere, Q cylinders, all that kind of stuff. These are just going to to turn it into a true um, sphere. So if I hit that, as you see, it pops back. It's going with a two division, two division, two division along the XYZ. You can actually change that if you want more. Um, again, I wouldn't suggest adding too much because we are going to add levels to that. So by doing this, it's snapped into its home space pretty much. Like if I turn on the floor, um, you see it went to the XYZ on whatever direction. It kind of unified it, made it smaller, and pulled it over there. Um, so I'm going to, to make this gizmo pop to this object. Right now there's symmetry on it. I'm going to turn off symmetry because I'm going to um, find the center mass and then I'm going to go ahead and click on the little Google map teardrop type of thing and that's going to pull it back. I'm then going to turn back on symmetry and then I can use the uniform scaling um, and etc to start pulling. So what this does is just allows me to kind of have um, some very basic forms uh, quickly, I can go into Z tool later if I want to and um, change this around. Um, I'm still probably going to treat it just like a sculpting because I'm playing around with it and I don't want to quite go to hard surface. I like to sculpt out my hard surface. I like to find the forms and go from it. So, hey, Saint Dupe, how's it going? How's it going, SR3? Um, is the anatomy problem? Is the anatomy problem to a new character? I'm sorry. What do you mean, John? Um, so right here when I hit on uh, uh, divide, this is going to ask me, is it going to go into a division? Um, I could just say always yes, and then it's going to see the point. So what it's doing right now is just going in, doing a dynamic. Right, If I open up the geometry tab, dynamic, it's doing a dynamic tab. It's not a true, um, it doesn't have any levels on it right now. If I start adding levels to it, it's going to get really heavy, really bloated pretty fast. You could always change the smoothness right here. Like I can change it to like a division of Ford and we'll get a lot smoother. So what it's doing is just giving me all these uh, points and it's just doing a turbo smooth or you know like a smoothing group on top of it while just being very basic. So if I want to sit there and go back to a traditional move, um, I can still move these things to get the shape. Um, but sculpting on this is, is I'm going to be sculpting on this very low level object. So be very aware of that. It's not in your traditional, if I had definition, uh, d divisions onto it. So if I start sculpting on this, you know, it's just going from those vertices. Even with that, it's still sculpting on that very low 26 poly mesh. Okay. So for me to sculpt on this object, um, I need to actually convert it into a make poly mesh 3D to change it to a sculpting object. If I want to sit there and still continue with this being like a very hard surface, I need to go up to a tool, hit like, you know, go to your, your brush menu, Z, um, and your Z modeler brush, okay? So what this does now is this is gonna change it more towards the hard surface modeling aspect of ZBrush, um, where I could, if I turn on my fill, 
um, I could actually then, whenever you hold over a quad, it's going to give you the quad mesh menu. When you hold down spacebar, it's going to give you all the different actions within to it. If you hold it over an edge, it's going to give you a different action window. If you hold over a vertice, it's going to give you a different action window. All these different things mean different, they have a whole bunch of different controls over top of those. So you have to just kind of play with them. Um, so let's say if I wanted to make this, um, you know, uh, this section right here a little bit um, separated, uh, I could just hold down over top of the uh, edge, hold down the spacebar, and then I can insert a single edge loop. That means just going to add one division loop across the whole thing. So when I click, it's going to start bringing it to where I have a little bit more of definition. So it's starting to you know make this little hard. So I can actually just keep adding, make it tighter. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just adding um, those divisions into it. So if I turn that off and I that's what's happening. I'm just adding chamfered, you know, edges, whatever like that. I mean, a, a, another line to make those two vertices get powerful. Uh, they pretty much get stronger together, so then they show more force over top of uh, something that's not. So, um, hey, Alex, how's it going? Good, good. Um, how much RAM would you recommend for sculpting? Uh, I have 32 gigs of RAM. Um, it's more than fine. What I would probably suggest is, you know, uh, more RAM equals good. I, I always, um, RAM's good. This is going to help. It's the brain power to, you know, it's like if you ate your Wheaties and stuff. Um, and RAM's getting a lot cheaper now, so it's pretty good. Um, so to get out of, I'm going to touch upon that a little bit later, um, but I'm going to go back and I'm just going to go to sculpting. I'm starting at a very low mesh instead of that previous one. So when I make poly mesh 3D, I'm going to come back into here. I'm going to just append that tool. So it's going to be right there. And you can just, you know, you can keep this if you want. Well, whatever I usually don't use, I just throw it at the bottom. And then, so now this is a poly mesh 3D. So when I start dividing it, it's a true sphere now. Where before, remember that sphere had a lot of the uh, triangulation towards the top. And it will be pinching when you try sculpting. So it's a lot easier form to do it. I'm going to divide it up quite a few times. Um, and because it was so low, it's it's uh, going to be in a higher division level. So right now I'm at level 7, where before it would be kind of um, level 5 or whatever. And then I'm just going to start kind of playing with some of my shape and kind of debating what I want to do. So maybe I'm not going to put in like um, a sphere, a sphere right there. And I'm pretty, I'm in a pretty high level. Um, so I might go back down just a little bit to define you know, maybe the shape, like if it's coming off, um, maybe there's like a buildup here from where it meets, and it's going to kind of probably meet around the ear and down, and then I might have something to where, you know, this is what's great about just kind of sculpting, I can kind of um, just add a few things and I can clean this up later, so if it has or maybe I might do like a roundabout, and then this might be a little bit more flat. Okay. Now I have a dynamic perspective on, so if you notice that it's kind of like <laughs> kind of wobbly. If I want to do flat, I could either do um, something with the divisions on here. Uh, I'm gonna hold down control and shift and it's going to change to this little right now that's giving me the the, uh, the box rectangle but if I click on this I'm going to go down to something called trim curve and that's going to change it to where I want to sit there and um, create a poly group along with making sure it's flat I want to turn off my dynamics uh, range and I'm just going to say cut um, because this is actually um, uh, at a division. When I hold down control shift and I drag, I would need to change the direction. The dark shadow is the direction that it's going to pull from to flat. So I'm going to try to slam everything down. It's going to give me an error action, action cancel. So I'm going to I'm going to go lower, um, just lower res, delete, and I'm going to freeze. Okay. Um, so what it's going to do now, because it's so low, I'm going to again, and what I'm doing is I'm letting go um, control shift and I'm moving. If you 
hold down the um, Alt button, you'll actually be able to kind of have a, a turn. If you double tap on your Alt, you'll have a strong, uh, you know, edge or whatever you're going to hold. Um, if I let go of Shift, I can actually move it to where it's going to move in increments of you know one instead of five. If I hold down Shift, it's going to move. This also changes the way the action brush happens. If I hold down Shift and I let go, it's going to cut straight across and populate right down to the bottom. Okay. Um, and if I had just hold down Control Shift and I had let go of Shift it's going to separate into two different poly groups. So that's where you do the cut. So that's kind of giving you a little bit of uh, um, different things. So just be aware of what whatever you want. I mean, I could I could um, now use this poly group and you know change, make it smaller, do a couple different things based on the poly group by holding Control Shift, you know, um, and then I could just uh, let's move it to its center, and then I can make this smaller. And when I unhide, it's going to just kind of <laughs> give, it's pulling in that top. It's still going to be flat, so you need to kind of go, all right, I'm going to mask this top, and I'm just going to pull this down, okay, and in a way, do the same thing with that, um, the, uh, the cut. So if I wanted the poly group separated, I could do it this way as well. This is a little bit longer way to go, and I want to say it's successful, so I might just kind of go, oops. Got to go back to that trim curve. And let's flip it around. And I'm just going to flatten straight. It's kind of giving me some messed up look right here. I can clean this up later. I'm not really worried about it. Um, and when I hit freeze done, it's going to kind of give me some messed up stuff because I was very low. So this is why I like to keep things kind of sculpting because if I start trying to clean up afterwards, it's going to get kind of messed up. So I'm going to undo pretty much all of that, okay? And I'm just going to delete higher, delete lower, because I'm going to go back to just where it's flat. So now if I hold down trim curve, okay? I had those poly groups. It's going to be two separate, and it's it's a little bit more. I'm just in my sculpting. I'm just thinking how this is going to look. I'm not worried about being clean. I'm not worried about you know trying to do you know a few other things that I'm not quite ready to jump into. So. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of sculpt. So now that I have this here, I'm gonna bring in another shape, just another sphere. And this one, I'm not gonna go through that process. I'm just gonna do sculpting. Um, oops. So like, let's say I'm gonna have like a, an egg part that's gonna kind of intermix, um, but I wanna bring it forward. And then this might have like a little bit of uh, you know, shape here, and it kind of interacts with this object. So I'm kind of trying to just figure out these shapes. Okay. And we can make it like a, a little bit more of a hard surface, a little bit of a clean, robotic shape right now I'm just trying to design. So on this one right here I might have to kind of split the flesh a little bit more now that I have that. Let's make it kind of wrap around. I might kind of just decide that this is a little bit more fleshy. I'm going to use the in flap brush to kind of give some weight to this piece. Make a heavier brow. weighting those up. So now that I'm, I'm playing with those shapes, I'm starting and I'm bringing in that other other stuff I can go, well that ear I want to drop this ear kind of like it's intersecting with that little piece of geometry or you know maybe maybe the ear might be a little bit more droopy farther to kind of bend to that and then let's bring like the, the back of the head so it's sort of and, this, and now that I have those shapes, let's go ahead and just let's weight, add some weight to the to the balance here. 
so. How often do you control poly count and what the number is safe? Um, most, um, I'm not really concerned about poly count at the moment. Um, just kind of trying to find the shapes and, and see what I need to do for the character. It kind of, um, if, it, if it gets too heavy to where, um, you know, because uh, Adrian was asking me about RAM, if, if it's where your computer starts to chug, you're starting to have problems with, with certain things, that's where you need to kind of probably be concerned about poly count or too much divisions on your stuff. I mean, right now, I don't have that many divisions. I'm still underneath a mill on this object. So um, let me go ahead and append in another sphere because I want to start working on the eyes. Um, a lot of times when I create, I'd like to take a look at the eyes, make sure that, because um, the eyes are going to define the character. Happy, sad, mad, glad. And it's just going to kind of give me some ideas. Um, okay, what I did, I'm sorry, I did it pretty quickly. I just went to the Z plugin down to Subtool Master. And then when that clicks it on, when you when you do that, it brings up a different type of a box like Mirror, Merge, all that kind of stuff, and a few different things. I use this for Mirror. There's also another plugin that you can kind of get. Uh, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and again, remember, it doesn't have symmetry on, so now I'm pulling in my symmetry to kind of deal with this and I want to kind of start detailing out this eye. I'm going to make it probably a little puff, puffy and let's do, let's define out this eye a little bit more. Hey Juan, how's it going man? Thanks for joining. Um, I actually just sit there, uh, yeah, side effects so on support edge when we were talking about hard surface. Um, I use clay. I don't. I mean, some people use the clay tubes. It depends on whatever you feel comfortable with. To be quite honest, I mean, they all do great. Um, clay is just has you know no alphas, and you can always just add your own alphas to the clay brush. Um, so it just depends on what what you think is pretty well. So I'm going to kind of make this guy a little bit more. Inquisitive. Not quite liking that eye section yet, so I'm going to play with this just a little bit more. But by having that sphere in there that allows me to start feeling this out, I'm going to come down to my nose and let's go ahead and clean up the nose. Let's just kind of define what I want to kind of, I might pinch it up a little bit and pull down. And now I can kind of detail and I'm going to have this top nose kind of flange over top okay and I might kind of just separate this nose and lead down into now whenever you try to do something down the center line sometimes it pulls a little bit further apart than you want it's kind of hard to hit it I that's why I use the pinch tool to kind of come back and kind of define out some of what I want for that okay and by having that scan data I'm kind of using what that actor had with some of the definition of his mouth but I'm going to just change a few things start adding some of my old folds and pulls and he kind of had like a little round to the lip so I'm going to use some damn standard with some in flat in there to kind of beef it up I'm going to go down a little bit lower my level so I'm not dealing with the tertiary details because I need to build the forms so right now I'm just kind of looking for the forms let's build this lip over here And let's pop up his lips a little bit, come out. How's it going, Zas in there? Kitsune? Um, and the standard brush, in which circumstances would you use it? Folding's general shape. Adrian, I'm kind of all over the place. I mean, the standard, it gives me a nice, you know, general 
and flow. It's not giving me any kind of weight. You can actually go into your brushes and add gravities and do other whole bunch of stuff you want. I have a tendency to just use my pull brush, you know what I mean? My move brush to kind of give me any kind of gravity as I'm looking for it. But my standards, I kind of like pop out. Um, brush, I kind of give some of the details. And then I use in flat to kind of add weight and damp standard to add definition. And clay to add some of the more flat areas. That's kind of how I use these brushes to kind of guide um, some of my different shapes that I want. So like right now I want to kind of define this cheekbone a little bit more out. I'm going to use the in flat brush. Okay. So then I might come in here, go up a level and kind of say, well, what do I want to, um, you know, let's define out this section of eye. I'm just kind of giving them some kind of weird detail. Um, again, I'm trying to add to some of the alien feel to them. Um, and I might pull out his eyes just a little bit more. Because I want to flatten out that face. I want to um, kind of give to the, almost to where the shape of this is kind of like he's a little bit more, he ran into a wall. Okay. And so when I did that, I need to come back to here. I accidentally used damn standard to kind of do some definition there, so I just took that out. Okay. So now, since I have that upper section, let's go ahead and I'm going to use the move tool to wrap some of this flesh around. Because I think I might want to kind of maybe even bring this up a little bit taller. Oops. Didn't like that. Okay. I'm going to kind of have like a little... I, I, I like to have, within my work, hard surface that is organic, meaning it's got a lot of flow. It's got a lot of um, line quality uh, that's pretty. So... Um, and I have a tendency whenever I have students do any kind of work, I have a tendency to kind of go, you need to do like a Black & Decker uh, drill or KitchenAid or, you know what I mean? It's got a lot of, um, of that organic flow. So now I'm just using uh, clay. Now, this right here, um, it's got dynamic on it. So as you see, my computer's starting to balk, and it's not what I want. So I want to go ahead and take off dynamic divisions. So now my sculpting's faster. So if you ever... You ever get into to where why is this super slow? Check to make sure you don't have dynamic on. That's a bad thing, um, unless you want it. <laughs> Just be aware of it. So, okay. So I'm just defining out some of this. Say what's going to work. I think I need to carry this line. So I'm going to go back. Let's just kind of bring it to where maybe just disappears. Whatever. Just some of this defining information. Um, let's go back to this piece. And it's it's sort of, um, even though I had that swatched, I can actually bring this up and do it, you know, I can bring this up a little bit higher um, as I'm playing around with this to, and recut it again uh, to make it flat if I want. Uh, so right now I'm not really concerned. I'm just trying to find some of the shape. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit earlier what I was going. So, um, yeah, ZBrush, uh, Bistrom, welcome to the channel. Uh, ZBrush is great. I, I've, I talked to a lot of my traditional friends um, that do fantastic work. I use this as concepting uh, in a way. I kind of I'm just playing. It's sort of like if you gave me some Play-Doh, I would just kind of make up some stuff. ZBrush allows me to sit there and do this on the fly really quickly. What do I want? Uh, how do I want to handle things? Um, and that's where this really comes in handy about you got to make sure that you're kind of um, exploring. You know, don't don't get too technical on things and just kind of break down. Now, like this section right here, I might have to kind of change to where I take this out entirely. I might not even use this piece, but I like that piece. Um, I just might just do it with a different thing. So I'm going to go back to my sphere, and I'm going to just bring this in. So maybe you just have like three different sections. Again, um, I kind of squatted it, 
and I'm going to use my move tool and I'm just going to kind of pull and bring this guy in as a separate shape entirely. Okay. And I'll figure out how to transition so either this will this will kind of go over top So all I'm doing is just kind of ghosting some of that shape that I did before, kind of following it a little bit while I'm playing. And then that way I can go into here and then just kind of wipe this out. Or at this point in time, I can sit there and say, you know what, I want this to be kind of sharp. Okay, and it has all this information. This is again where it's got dynamic on it. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to divide it up a little bit to give some of the information. Apparently not a mill. I don't need this. I'm going to delete the lower and I'm going to go back to uh, that curve brush and I'm going to start to where I want it to kind of go flat here and I'm going to hit alt to start to get that little flow. I'm going to hit alt again and let go. Okay, so what that did is it just did a nice little cut for me that I can kind of clean. And then I could use that trim dynamic to kind of sharpen some of these areas and, you know, maybe there's like a little uh, vent port hose section. This is where I like sculpting because it's like if I was doing this in hard surface and I was concerning myself with how is this going to cut in or how am I, I don't care. I am making this up as I go and I'm just playing and looking for shapes. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going to have this kind of be sharp where it meets. Okay. And then that way I can kind of decide like how do I want this, um, you know, maybe this is going to be a rest, a resting pad for some of this heavier flesh or, or whatever. Who knows? cheekbone a little bit. Okay, let's go back to defining the eyes. I want to puff them up a little bit. I don't like the fact that they're really kind of barely there. So I almost want him kind of squinting. Like he's kind of got some heavy weight. So this is where I'm using the in-flat brush going to pump up some of this region. I'm going to take away some of the skin detail that was on my character from before. Let's give them a little bit more of leading your eyes up and around. And let's add some definition of skin where it kind of meets, almost kind of like there's two layers. Okay. So I'm not quite into the high level tertiary detail. I'm just kind of starting to kind of figure out some of the flow by the eyes and what I want. And I'm going to carry this up a little bit more to where it's a little bit puffy. Okay. Sorry, I'm losing you guys on some of this stuff. Um, how do I make some of the armor details? I'll, I'll go in and I'll clean up this a little bit, guys, um, in, here in a minute um, before I get. I'm, I'll go over some of the hard surface. Not much. I, I, I'm not a big hard surface guy. I can do it. It's not my fun. Um, hey, I cry. How's it going? Yeah. Well, if, yeah. If you got you got a really good computer, you really don't care about uh, the, the the dynamic. I mean, my computer is good. It's just the fact that I don't like the it, it adds definition where you really don't see it instantly, and. I'm very much on the fact that I like to keep things very quadded because I work in the game industry. I like to th keep things clean and I'm very aware of the poly count. Because um, if I did a character that's like millions, 25, 27 million polys and it's going to be on a 512 by texture or whatever, it's not going to make a difference. So you have to really be aware of some of that. Okay, so now I'm kind of, I want to kind of make him a little bit more snootier. Okay. 
Hey man, how's it going? Um, work with symmetry and then post. Um, especially if you're hard surface, it's a little bit easier for you to kind of control. That's what I would suggest. That's how that's how I handle. I usually kind of have a tendency to just be very symmetrical and then find the pose later. Um, you know, I mean, you can do posable symmetry as well, uh, but you need to have a the symmetry on. And if there's any kind of accident, then it becomes difficult later. There's there's very good traditional guys that are, are used to posing or you know um, sculpting non-symmetrical. I, I have a tendency to like if I create one eye, I, wanna, I just want to have it done, and then I'll go back and I'll add asymmetry at the end. I will I will tweak things at the end and kind of play with it. That's how I personally handle it. Um, but everybody is more comfortable with different things. You have to find your um, what you're comfortable with, how you like to do it. So let me go ahead and just add some fat skin detail here. Some wrinkles. Change the spacing. Um, now I'm going up to the higher levels. As you can see, some of that detail. And I have a lot of the skin um, still from the scan, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some alpha details off of that later and pick. But now that I'm kind of going through, I'm going to start kind of changing the mouth how I want to kind of add some of those details. Um, I want to kind of emphasize some of this pocket um, change and definitely get into the the weight of the eye. So the the eye. I think the fact that it's just not, I want to make it heavier, so I'm going to kind of add some more weight to that upper eyelid and kind of almost kind of separates the two pieces but are connected in kind of a way. So like this shape is kind of connected to this shape. Um, Let's add a little bit more weight to the bottom and define the eyelid. So if I'm going to be defining this, okay. So right now I'm at three million, and that's because the geometry is kind of all messed up. It's not as clean as I would like. Um, but sometimes when I re-zebra mesh and do a couple different things, it gets kind of messy. So. Sorry, we got trash. It was a little bit late today, so okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this really quickly. Make sure I'm good, and I'm gonna start taking a look at uh, some of the shape now that I got more of those details in. So I'm gonna thicken the neck down a little bit, but I'm gonna. This this line from the neck of the old man, I'm going to go ahead and just separate and kind of change some of that flow because I want to have like kind of almost have some of the fat folds kind of pulled down. I've got a lot of this fat fold right here, but I, I really want to kind of, if you guys kind of see the shape right here, it kind of, kind of comes down. I want to kind of leave the eye just a little bit down so I'm going to take out some of this separation and then let's make this a little bit thinner just to help pop out this jawline a little bit and because this is kind of going too heavy too much of a blob I'm going to go down to my levels and let's bring this out this chest out a little bit more and it's kind of play with some of this to where it's all kind of bulky. So I'm using the in-flat brush to kind of help some of that blend in. Okay. And when I go up in levels, I'm going to have to probably wipe out 
some of that and rework it. That's fine. And let's just make some weird pimples shapes as I go up. Okay, so that way I kind of can then play with leading your eye down with some of these folds. Okay. Kind of add some weight to his front collar to balance his head. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn back on my dynamic and 50 is fine. Let's separate some of this. Get a little bit more weight. For the face skin, did you use nanomesh? Uh, the face has started from a, a, a scan of a older man that I've used for a few of them because a, a lot of people have a tendency to been just using the scan data and they just kind of barely do anything to it and call it their own. So I was trying to show how you can create something from something entirely that's not, you know, not human, from a human. You can do quite a few different things that just kind of adds to your, your design. Um, just so people didn't just kind of like take the nose and, and blow up a nose, uh, make it a little bit fatter and call it their own, which I've seen quite a bit, to be quite honest. <laughs> so that's where I was kind of like, what could I do to kind of help out students or help out people new to break open the box, but, you know, stop some of that, um, I don't want to call it cheating necessarily. It's just not, it's not a good way to go. You know, you don't really learn anything from barely doing anything, so... Okay, so let's tighten this. So this guy, I think I'm gonna go back to here, make this a little bit tighter, and pull this in. I'm using the pinch tool to make those a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm using the trim dynamic to separate out some of these shapes. And then go down the level if you need to to smooth out things. Okay. All right. So on this piece that I was kind of starting to work on, I need to define that a little bit more. So this is where um, let's divide it up a little bit. Let's bring in some more of shapes to kind of help. Uh, the other ones, and then let's kind of go. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to, I don't know, he's wearing some kind of weird, uh, uh, someone brought a battle Alina, or battle angel Alita, so maybe this is a racing helmet, so he's, he's in there with her. It's a great manga, by the way. So, I'm kind of creating like a, metal racing helmet. I don't think I'll put 99 on it, but let's define this out. So if I was going to let's make it a little bit more aerodynamic. And if you're having trouble like with some of the lines you need to tweak them, just go down. Um, it takes a lot longer to sit there and try to do a lot of those details in the higher res section of it. So, Especially since we're just finding the shapes. Okay. Since it's alien, who's to say this isn't their design? I mean, that's the great thing about when you create your own world, your own creatures, everything else. It just, you're in charge of what it's going to be, what's happening to it. 
So I'm just going to kind of make some kind of weird looking screw thing. I think we're getting a little bit closer. Here we go. Um, uh, did I create my models in Dynamesh? I started from the scan. Um, I kind of reworked it, but a lot of what I do is. I'll just take Z spheres and play, and I'll just I'm just tossing in stuff, and then once I get the design that I like, I'll kind of I'll kind of tweak them further. So I'm using the scan really just to get some of the flow from the face, and just to show how to start. Uh, you know, for someone to if you you have a scan, how to just kind of take something and play with it, rather than just exactly what it, the scan is. Um, I mean, this is if you saw from the start, this is nothing like the guy that's my play you know it's like i'm just trying to take some of the details some of the little you know he had a cool lip or he had a you know some of his neck skin um uh you know gave me an idea to do a shape you know that kind of that's why I, i've been using this older man um because i've used him for quite a few of the episodes and all my creatures are kind of you know hopefully a little bit different you know um they're not uh, exactly the same and if they were then I would kind of go back and, and go all right let's find another actor um, or look for different shapes I do have a tendency to fall into the same shapes that I like I think uh, a lot of artists do you kind of um, like I guess that's the style or whatever that people say you kind of that they see in other people's work um, I don't necessarily see it but if uh, you know that's what people see. That's what they see. All right. So okay. All right. Getting close to going to poly painting and uh, I mean alphas and tweaking up that little section. So if I'm happy with this and uh, let me go down and I'm just going to wipe out some of that skin direction changes from that earlier, you know, creature kind of stuff. Um, let's change. figure out some of the forms guys I'm using the pinch to kind of tighten let's take a look now either I could take this and see what it looks like where it's kind of encapsulating which I kind of like or you know I could actually just take this and throw it over top and define it, which looks cool too. I mean, it's that's that's the thing is that's a great thing when you have a couple different pieces and you're kit bashing them together. Um, you can quickly just go, you know what? Let's see what this looks like I'm going over top. You know, let's see what this might do if I try that. Uh, you will never be able to do that if you have it all as one piece and if you're very concerned about not trying it. Um, that's why. I'm trying to share how I go about things sculpting just so people can kind of just relax and, and um, you know, except I think that's where you get the best creations if you're not worried about I'm going to make this the best creation. If this turns out like crap, okay. <laughs> you know, thanks for joining me. Um, thank you, Cor <laughs> Corgis. I appreciate it. Um, it. It just, that's the thing. It's just like I'm not concerning myself with... Um, 
trying to wow you guys. I'm not trying to sit there and go, this has to be my best piece ever that I created. Um, I want to sit there and just try to help out where, um, you know, some of my techniques, but also a lot of the philosophy of the, the fact that I think a lot of people get too wrapped up and I have to be the best artist, everything. There's always somebody that kicks the shit out of you. Just give up. Always going to be. So what you do is you just enjoy, you know, what you're doing. You could be hell, you know. <laughs> Not doing what, you know, what I'm doing right now. It, this is this is pretty fun. So exploring and making up crap. Awesome. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with some of the shape. I'm not, I don't really like how thick his... his um, it is, so I'm going to probably bring these down a little bit. So I'm trying to say, I'm going to bring them in. Probably a little bit more. Because right now, when you look at the front, I just see the face. I don't see any of the, the helmet. Now, I could, I mean, that joke about battle, you know, it's like aerodynamic, but I want to bring in more of that helmet and more of this detail. From this shape, so I think I'm going to go ahead and bring this out a little bit to again um, define, echo, and shape. This so it's almost kind of like um, it's a protection piece for the back of the brain, but it's also like, you know, like hell yeah, this is just the holder. I mean, it's not rubber kind of holding in that little section, but it's letting your eyes see what's going on here in the head. I think that's working a little bit better. And then I'm going to probably carry this shape. Now, the only thing that's kind of hard is when you have two shapes that are um, separate to make them kind of like match up you know what I mean I, I don't necessarily want to have this piece be exactly to that piece and and match um, necessarily you know I could try to hide it in texture later um, but since there are two separate pieces I'm going to kind of make sure that they are not quite they can follow the same kind of flow but they don't have to be the exact same level okay Let's go ahead and bring that out. Sorry, you guys are sorry talking. You're great. This is awesome. Uh, okay, how do you implement this into a video game? What kind of thing do I need to learn? A character artist, uh, uh, Miguel. Uh, if to implement this into a video game is sort of like, well, um, you have. If I was tasked with, you know, create a creature uh, that can go into like a Star Trek kind of game, um, I'm just going to be doing the exact same thing I'm doing right now. I'm just going to start looking for shapes, making up ideas, making backstory to my characters. Um, uh, if I have a concept, that's pretty much what you know the concept artist has done. Um, is that he made up the backstory, did everything else, but he did it in 2D, and then I and then I would just take whatever he did. Um, and create it into 3D. Once you have the high poly, you know, form, then you create the low poly from that, and you just carry like you normally would. So anything can be made into a video game. I mean, you know, character or whatever. It's just uh, the poly limit that you're stuck by, and you know. So I mean, there was no Halo before Halo was created, that kind of thing. So um, I think let's go on to. Some of this form. So I'm going to save this before I start. And texture is going to really help the look of the character. I'm trying to. I don't want to make him look evil. I want him kind of look kind of. And this shape right here is kind of bothering me. Like I'm not. I like the. The, uh, the cheek line, but it's sort of not really flowing down to the nose. It's almost like I need, I got too much of a um, closeness to the nose. So I'm going to go into here and just going to separate out this a little bit more. 
and maybe make this nose a little bit thicker. Okay. I'm bringing the brow down, flatten it out. Okay. So for these pieces that I've kind of created, um, it's it's sort of um, let's take this piece. Uh, it's it's just a sphere from the regular sphere. Okay. Um, I want to sit there and kind of clean this up um, to put in some more detail when it's 130,000. Let's go ahead and go up to the tool and clone just to kind of give it a breath of fresh air. And I'm going to just go ahead and say duplicate for the moment. Um, you can use the eyeball to hide and unhide. Um, I'm going to just go down to lower res and delete the higher and delete the lower. Um, and I'm going to go to zebra mesh and I'm going to just go down to one. Actually, let's even do lower. Let's try like 0.5 because it should be able to, oops, 0.5. Okay. And there's no groups on this, meaning there's no poly groups. Now, if I said I wanted to um, make this um, separated a little bit, like if I want this as a separate group, I could do it this way. I can go and mask out this shape, you know, however, however I want to do it. And then I could just go down to poly groups, and say group masked. Okay. Now this is pretty low. So as you can kind of see, it's going to be kind of, kind of nasty. Okay. Um, before you do that on the masking, you can come up here and say sharpen mask and try to get it, but there's not a lot of definition. So I'm not really concerned about that right now. Um, so let me unmask it. I'm just going to just say zero mesh, and it's going to take that information and it's just going to clean it up. Okay, there's some pinching here, but as long as that's a quad, that's fine. And then I'm going to go um, turn back on the original, make sure it's kind of as high as it can be. It's half a mil, and let's just go ahead and project some of those details back um, as I go up. and just hit solo to make sure it kind of picks it up. That way, I now can come in here and it's a little bit easier for me to kind of clean up, go down to the levels, um, and do a few different type of type of things. And then once I have that, I'm just gonna go back over to my original piece and hit insert and then just bring that new piece in. Um, you can tell by the different poly limits. So this is a lot cleaner. So there's that way to do that, okay? So now that I have that little piece, um, it's all cleaned up. That's from the sculpt. Okay. Um, if I want to sit there and say uh, I want to create geometry, uh, let's give this guy just like a little bit more of a bottom cheek. Okay. And let's say he wanted to have some fins. Like um, since he's a racing type guy, I'm going to go to my highest level. Let's let that save. <coughs> hey, Ryan. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, oops. You guys have been talking. That's paused. Hey, what's up, David? How's it going, Schultz? Hey, Pro. How's it going? Okay, I think. Hey, UK Vemison. Um, I think I think we're at the bottom. Let me let me type just to make sure. I've had it to where I forgot to say. Hey. Okay, I'm at the bottom. <laughs> so, um, let's say I want to add racing stripes to this guy or, or whatever. There's a different way you can do this by masking, which is, is pretty powerful. I'm fairly high. Uh, I'm just going to mask out like this little section and like some, he might have some kind of fins. Okay, and I'm going to. And I'm, I'm holding down uh, Control and Alt to erase, um, holding down just control to sit there and draw the mask. So, I don't know, he's got something like that. Okay, you're going to go to extract, which is in the, um, the geometry subtool, palette, the tool palette. Down here is an extraction. You click open extract, I usually turn off double. It's at right now, um, 0.02 thickness. So when I hit extract, it's going to give me 
let me turn it a little bit better, a, a certain depth and thickness. This is where you can kind of go, you know, I, I don't want it to be too thick. I can extract off that. It's a little bit better. Um, and But it looks kind of messy. So before I do that, I'm going to come down to my masking tablet. And I'm going to say sharpen mask. So I'm going to give it a little bit better, a little bit sharper. Um, because the poly limits here are kind of messy, it's not going to give me as good. And then let's go back up to mask and extract. And I'm going to say accept. Now, it's going to give you the new extraction off of that and give you a little mask. If I hold, if I look at the um, line fill, you should be able to see a poly group, a poly group, and a poly group if it's done it right. It's kind of messy right now. I'm not really worried about that at the moment. So, because I'm going to go down to my zebra measure and I'm going to go to, let's see, point three. Let's try that. I'm going to turn on keep groups because I want to actually have the groups cre uh, created. And I'm going to hit zero mesh. And that's going to go through and it's going to kind of try to clean this up better. I need to go 0.01. Okay. And let's try another zebra mesh. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of cleaning up that little object. All right. So this is my racing stripes. Uh, it has no detail to them. If you notice it got kind of on the, it kind of went inside. That's fine. I'm going to clean that all up. Um, so, uh, let's see. Hey, Brian, thank you very much, man. Um, extract works similar to extrude. In a way, UK, um, it's, it is extruding from whatever your, your masking is. It's creating shapes. It's creating, like if I have a character, bare chested character, I just, um, will do a masking and I'll extract a shirt off of it. Or if I have a, I want to keep a mask that's really close to the detail of the face, I'll just mask out that face and extract and then clean up. So it's just, it's a, it's a new way to do it. Now that I have this piece, um, and I'm pretty low, I mean, I could keep it in zero mesh and I might clean it up a little bit. It's just losing some of the shape. So I'm going to go into something called the Z tool, Z model again. I'm going to click on this one. This is where I can then use this to clean it up. So um, let's say I don't want to have those two poly, uh, those two lines. So I'm going to go while I'm over top of that line, I'm going to hit control. I mean, sorry guys, hit the space bar. I'm going to go delete and I want to say target. I don't want to do one. I want to do an edge loop complete. That means it's going to go whatever this edge has. I'm just going to delete those out. I'm going to take those out of there. Um, and I'm going to clean up the shape by going every other one. And so what I'm doing is I'm creating my own reduction. I'm kind of controlling that shape. I might kind of say reduce this one, reduce that, reduce that, reduce that, reduce that. So I'm going really low. So now I've taken that shape down to just this little simple shape. Okay, so you can actually work your way back and kind of clean up and then take it from there. So if I want to um, add detail, so let's say I want to add a chamfer to this edge. It's a quad, so I'm going to go over top of that edge. I'm going to hold down the space bar. And I'm going to go to bevel, edge loop complete, and I'm going to kind of bring it out. Okay, so I'm getting kind of some funky stuff towards the bottom here, that's fine. If I turn that edge back on, okay, it's just adding it. But let's say I want to kind of define this edge um, a lot more. To add definition to that 45 degree angle, I'm going to go back on the edge, click on the space bar, I'm just going to insert, and I'm just going to kind of create an insert line there, and a line there. So now when I turn on that, I'm starting to define that edge the light is catching it, which is important because if you're going to create something that is high poly, but you're going to fake it out on low poly, you have to use that edge information and light source. That's how the normals kind of pick up on it and kind of fake it out. So all I did here is just kind of define that edge. Now, this is sort of, it has some thickness, but not a lot. I could, um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of extrude it out, but right now it has the same poly group. Actually, let me go ahead and move these points a little bit, or I'm using the shift um, button to smooth. Um, I'm going to change this poly group from the top poly group. I'm just going to hold down Alt, and I'm just going to change it into a different poly group by itself. Okay, and then so now I have a couple different poly groups. My um, other side I have symmetry on, so it's going to take care of it. 
So then I can go over top of the quad, hold down uh, the space bar, and I either can move by polygroup island um, to where I can just pull it, okay? Or I can, and if you notice, it changed the polygroup, which is fine. As long as it's a polygroup island, it's fine. So I can thicken that up, and you know, I can, I can move this later. Um, or now that it's a little bit deeper into the face, I'm going to go back to um, my Z modeler, and I'm going to insert, still is on there, and I'm just going to insert there. Let me, and when I hit smooth, you see how it kind of rounds out? I'm going to do another one to, again, control it so it actually has thickness to it, all right? So there is my little racing stripe detail that is pretty low. I'm going to go back into my move. Uh, by the way, if you ever had the problem where the brush size is super small, just double click on dynamic and that will allow you to sit there and manipulate it. So now I can take this shape, you know, and I can kind of play with it and, you know, or if I want to sit there and bring it to where this is like a, um, kind of comes out as a fin. Varies into the skin. So now I'm just kind of creating some racing detail. Now I don't know if I like that. <laughs> don't know. I just wanted to show you just like based on the extrusion. You know, I, it's just it's just a quick way to go. Yay! Uh, like, do I want to sit there and see if this guy has any um, uh, antennas? Now I could go to extraction. I could also go into um, you know my snake hook brush and go antennas. Sure. Yes. No. Maybe so. Um, but what I could do is easily just do the extraction off that piece. I like can even say a little bit, you know, let's just go to one. So it's really, okay, I have to clear clear that previous one. So let's say if I want to do antennas right here. Extract, that's a little bit too much. Point four. Oops. I think I might have lost it. No, okay. Never mind. And then I could extract and do the same thing off that. I'm not going to test that. Um, so that just allows me to sit there and play around and try a different few uh, different ways to do it. Now that this piece is, you know, here, I could actually um, say to this. So let's go back to this piece right here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. It is um, still has that poly frame like so. So I could actually just um, polish by, if you go to deformation, you can polish by features, okay? You can use this to polish by groups if you want it to be tightened. Um, as you can see, it kind of gets a little bit hard there. I could hide this and then flatten this out, you know, based on that. Of course, it's going to be kind of messy. But that poly group is right there. Um, so if I hide this again, you know, you can you can do tricks like that. It's kind of messy. What I would probably rather do is just without my dynamic perspective on, I'm going to go ahead and do the trim curve again. And again, the whatever the shadow line is on, that's the one it kind of is going to cut to. If I want to cut evenly, I'm going to do like so. And playing with the shapes. So this is how you can clean up and make things really sharp. Um, and if, it, if I want to clean this up, I can. Uh, let's see, if I want to, want to make this area Accidentally created a poly group, did not mean to create a poly group. So if I want to sharpen up a few of those, the um, this one right here, because it is, um, as you see on that one side, it didn't work. If symmetry is on a different direction, 
it's not going to capture. So I can go like this on this side, and it's not going to capture that side. So um, that's the one thing that's kind of funky in this, because it's based on the screen. So if I turn that on, okay, I like that side, maybe. So if you ever kind of like decide that you want to do one side or another, um, you're like you, this side's working, that side's not. You could always just turn off symmetry, make sure it's going straight, masking out that one side, and we're going to go up to here to mesh topology, mirror and weld, and it's going to take whatever that one piece and, and do it. Okay. Now if you're like, I like this side, but not that side, mirror and weld, notice how it's still getting on this side. So um, what you have to do is you have to kind of flip. You can try using Subtool Master and you're going to say mirror um, or you can um, I don't have it on this one. Let me go ahead. You could just uh, Subtool Master. Let me see mirror. Let's just append as a different tool. So that way when you go to here this side is good that side and I just delete out that one side so then that way I go I want this side you can just go to modify topology mirror and weld there you go um, then you can kind of slowly clean up just like I was showing you before um, any questions on that so far guys I've tried that showing like where he's talking about um, deformation and you got a uh, mirror right here um, as well. So let's try it. So let's say I just do on this piece. Okay, I don't have symmetry on. And you, I thought I turned symmetry on. Okay, symmetry's off. Okay, and let's just say I concentrate on I accidentally hit the marker up there, buddy, uh, guys. So, all right. So I just sharpened up that one side. He's the same mirror, multiple subdivision levels. Um, I could freeze um, as well for the mirror if I want to go through that, um, or I just collapse uh, whatever def whatever levels I have on this stuff and try it again so um, it really I mean there's a couple different ways to go about these things um, I'm fine with that so let's get on to sculpting um, you know what okay these eyes just to look a little bit I need more puffy so I'm gonna go back down I'm gonna mask out it's bothering me I just need to kind of okay. Okay, feels a little bit better. Hey Dark, what's my horror influence? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really. I don't watch too too much horror. I mean, like Walking Dead, that kind of stuff. Um, caught a couple, uh, The Quiet Place, and a few other ones that were pretty cool. Um, I don't watch a lot of anime, that kind of sort of thing. Um, off the top of my head, I can't even think. Of it. <laughs> Sorry, I wish I could say. I mean, I guess I'm more influenced by the, a lot of the artists that actually, you know, created a lot of the horror stuff. Um, or nature itself is pretty horrific. So, I'm going to play with this one. Can you go into more detail about inserting edges and to catch the light correctly? Uh, Jacob, what I'm talking about is like on, on something like this, when you have 
a defining shape. Um, so let's say, um, let me let me define. Let me turn off my dynamic subdivision. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the lower, and I'm going to. to um, I can do that. Yeah, sometimes even though you do it kind of oops. Ah, I hit double tap. Trying to make it like a swoop and a defining piece on this one. So let's say I wanted to kind of do to where that is flattened out, and I'm at 1.3. So this is where we're kind of getting a little more. So and since this should no, nope, that added it. Um, this right here. It's just the flat. So when you have an edge, I could actually go through my trim dynamic and kind of create that sharp edge that you visually see on the piece, right? That's what I was talking about, to where you can actually see light catch. It's not going to be a sharp object. You want to actually fake out some of the definition of what's going on there. That's very important for when you're doing um, high poly to low poly work. You're trying to make it look correct. Um, Actually, let me go ahead and clean up that that piece now. So again, just you can just clone, go back into that piece. Already has that section. Um, that's fine. Duplicate. Um, it's pretty high level right now, so I'm just going to when I when you have something really high level, let's just go ahead and just turn blur and dynamic a uh, dynamesh. Um, then do the zebra mesh because if you have something that's really high you don't need to do it. I'm going to keep the groups on this one and I'm going to make sure symmetry is on and just say zebra mesh. Okay so if I go solo and I turn that on see how that cleaned up that little section here. Um, now I could actually go into uh, on this piece right here um, let me pull it back into where are you at? There we go. Uh, insert that new piece. That's the old piece. I'm going to delete. Uh, I'm not going to project on this one because it's pretty round and I want to define that uh, information. So right now when I define that out, it doesn't have a lot of information. Um, it's pretty smooth across the board. If I want to sit there and add that definition, I'm going to go to the lower level and I'm going to bevel this edge. Okay, see, delete higher. Bevel that edge. And then insert and insert. Um, and then that way, that's when this goes down. So if I, if I want to move up to show this a little bit better, I'm just going to go to where are you at? Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm going to move polygon island. So then I can either define this or not. When I turn on that smoothing, um, you don't really see that bevel edge right there. But if I created another bevel edge here, it's catching some light, but not enough. So if I bevel this one, and then let me go ahead and just insert some definition around that bevel. And turn that light on. You're going to catch that edge a lot more. That's that's what I'm talking about. It's pretty important for for you to see what's going on. It's just uh, th now this little bevel edge. I want to bring out a little bit more. So I'm going to um, move that poly group down. Let's see. Yeah, Sean's talking about the uh, mirror and weld because left or right. So using the mirror from the different should be used if you're default of right side. Yeah, I mean it's. 
I, I don't know. I wish it. I always work the wrong side. That's pretty much my problem. Is I should just work on the, the left side uh, because that's this seems to work with it. But uh, hey, Brian, I'm glad. Yeah, the 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 shown the the reason I I dig through the stuff is so you guys can find it. If I have shortcut keys of everything I know, then you wouldn't be able to follow me. That's that's the problem I have with watching a lot of tutorials myself on my friends and pros that I know. I'm like, how the hell did you do that? Because they have it in some button that's been buried that they found that they use, and they're just doing enough quick hockey. So I try to because I teach so much, I try to kind of keep it basic. And when you see me suffer, I know what you're going through because I'm finding it myself too. Pretend you're working in Maya, because that's what it seems like, you know, window to window, window. Um, yeah, Geiger, Dark. Yeah, Geiger is phenomenal, for sure. A big inspiration. Uh, I want to be a character creature artist for video games. Which software for rendering do you recommend for me to learn from my portfolio? Uh, I want to call it render. I mean, engine. Yeah, you know, Marmoset or Unreal. Unreal's universal. Um, Marmoset's great, but I mean, you know, Unreal's kind of the big king right now. Hey, what's up, Cubed? Thank you. Appreciate it. Got to see her work as well, guys. Check it out. Um, so, I mean, that way it kind of defines it. If you see right there, my sculpt is getting a lot cleaner now. If I want to carry up some of this um, split on here, I'm going to go ahead and just um, uh, split edge. So, if I split that edge, that's cutting into it. Uh, what's a great way to do it? Let me bevel up. Um... So if I want to have a straight line go down the line, I'm just going to bevel. Then I can use the extrude. Um, if I do a single poly, we just give it like this. I want to kind of go in for poly group island towards the... And I guess I'll just go down. So that way it gives me that little, little section. That's fine. Um, now I could also, guys, uh, I could create a cylinder from here and do that. I'm going to go into uh, the IMM rushes and I'm going to take a look at creating some kind of additive piece to it. Some screws. Sure. Let's do a bolt head. Uh, now this piece right there, you can just pull. It's going to mask out. Um, so this allows me to added tons of different pieces that I can split off because this is actually masking so I can do polygroup mask and everything else like that. Hey Marco, thanks man. Z bus, I doubt it. <laughs> uh, how's it going Adrian? Good to appreciate you guys checking it out. Um, you can create your own IMM brushes as well which is great so let, let's say if I just want to add some screws to that um, I'm done. You know, once you create an object, the library, that's the beautiful thing about ZBrush is that once you have these libraries and these things that are, you're pretty much good with, you can just keep bringing them again and again and again and not have to recreate everything. Um, this is already masked. I'm going to go down um, to split and just say group split. And what that's going to do is just going to separate um, out the pieces. Now, the problem that I had on this one is that it split my groups. So um, I wanted to just split the screws. I did not want to split all my groups so right now it's separated out all my different pieces. They're all pretty low. I don't have any divisions so if you make that mistake as long as the divisions are the same I'm just gonna go ahead and merge down. It's gonna ask me yes 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 yes. Okay, and so what I'm doing is I'm pulling together everything that I lost on those groups merge down and then unmask. Um, and so it still should keep all my groups and if I hit my smoothing, I've lost the fact that it's not welded on that sucker. Uh, now there's a way you can export out this piece. Um, do it again, but I'm going to I'm going to cheat. How do you do it again? You see, split. bummer. I don't want to recreate that piece again. Um, Alright, so let's just do this. Let me turn back on. I'm trying to think, guys. There's so many ways to do um,
do things within ZBrush. Okay, um, I'm going to clone. Let's go to this piece by itself. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and Dynamesh this sucker. Let's see if I can work it this way. Okay. And no, don't like it. I was trying to think of a way. There's a way to export out this sucker and then bring it back in. Um, I don't know if you can actually weld. Okay, whenever you get that, that's the ZBrush is having issues. See if I can do weld geometry. Yay. Okay. Like I said, a couple different ways. So you, if you ever get stuck, you have to kind of go through and how the hell do I do that? How do I work this around? Now, um, this is mirror and welded. I'm keeping everything. So with the mirror and weld, since both sides were equal, um, it took a look at the geometry and just welded everything together, verts included. Uh, there is another trick that you can actually export and you can actually give a certain type of um, vertice um, surrounding to make sure if there are two vertices together that are not together that you can actually weld in the export. Uh, it's a lot of tricks from Max and a couple other things. And so, um, so just be aware, it's kind of um, it's kind of tricky. Uh, but now that those um, screws that I initially wanted are there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move to the center. Now if I rotate without holding down Alt, I'm moving the whole object. I'm going to kind of pivot and try to take a look at this because I want to squish them down just a little bit and move them in. Okay. Um, so I'm actually holding down the Alt to move that gizmo to do this. Now if I want to make more of these um, I'm going to hold down Control Shift and just drag, and I created another screw. Okay, so that way you can kind of do a couple different things. Or let's move it over to this different piece. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So again, we're concepting, but we're playing uh, using the same geometry that we already have in the scene and making it work. So now this piece right here, I might just kind of. I'm not going to go through that whole process. I'm just going to clean it up just a little bit, try to make it pretty. Okay. Make sure my symmetry's on. Okay. But to finish out this, you know, properly, what I would do is clean it up exactly what you've been seeing me do on each of these pieces, testing them out. But now I'm going to go into poly painting because what time is it? Okay, yeah, I'm going to get poly painting. So on here, I'm just going to go and quickly um, import an alpha. Um, again, I'm just going to use some kind of weird alpha open. And I want to have my Z add on. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. And I'm just going to make sure my. On. Now I'm going to lose, now this definition, this alpha is kind of coming out or digging in. I want it to go out, so I'm just going to hold down Alt and I'm just going to kind of give a little bit of definition. It is kind of messy because that's where me pulling and pushing and making things happen. That's that issue. Um, but I'm not really worried about it. And I'm going to just kind of add some of this alpha in the areas that I want. Um, because I'm going to probably blend in. So this is more of my bumpy aspect of my alpha. This is where I want to have some detail, like he's sort of got some skin, snake skin type of thing. Maybe not that much. Definitely on the back. Usually, you know, that's where you see a lot of the 
from, from nature, you take a look at that's where a lot of predators will see information. That's where you have a lot of, you know, things that will scare off. And that's where you see a lot more of the heavier bumps or like the warts on the frogs kind of stuff. That's uh, to let other animals know it's poison. So not necessarily saying this guy's poison, but, um, or he has that, but it's just that's where you see some of that detail. Or in teenagers, that's where you have a lot more of the zits and stuff happen when you're puberty. Either or, your call. Okay, let me grab another alpha. Usually I like to mix a couple different alphas. Um, I'm going to take a look at maybe some, some elephant skin, but not major. Just to kind of... Like now I brought in the intensity on each of these alphas can change. So you might have to kind of go in and, and just because one alpha level works, the other one might not. So just be aware. And the reason I'm not being too concerned about how nice this is is because I just want to give some of that skin, my poly paint, some some things to feed off of to when I throw this into a, a rendering engine, then the light will capture it. Okay. And again, I'm not trying to make this the best piece of my portfolio. I'm just trying to have some fun and just trying to concept. So these are what I would just kind of like, okay, that's my concept of a character. It's an idea. And I'll just chuck it in a drawer. And then I might bring it out later and utilize, or I might not. Um, I have a lot of stuff in my junk drawer. Because a lot of it's junk, but still. Okay, good, done. Um, to do color, I'm going to kind of think of... Um, Okay, talking about um, battle, Alita kind of stuff, uh, darks, uh, purples, that kind of stuff. Uh, I probably want to make this a little bit more flesh, but I'm going to switch over. I'm not going to do any kind of like alphas on here. I mean, this doesn't need alphas. I mean, you could do a couple where um, let's have some battle scrapes or whatever you know edges that have been kind of swashed in the um, going around the bend or whatever. But I might actually just you know, scar up some of myself. Um, but these are kind of low. So that's still, that's got that. So I need to actually turn this into a, a mesh um, itself. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'll make poly mesh. That way, I now can sculpt on it. So let's say I'm gonna. This is where the asymmetry might come in. I might just do where it's a clay, a hit, you know, some bullet holes or whatever, some scratches. You know, you can you can make up that stuff however you want. Some of the edges, usually always on the edges that are out. That's where you get a lot of scratches. Some of the front scenes, some of the damage, etc., etc. This is part of the story that when you do in your characters you can kind of make up and I'm going to I'm going to borrow another one And then, you know, just little subtleties. I'm just going to turn it a little bit. So let's say that's there. Now that I have that in color, I'm going to go to my my material hits. You can actually go ahead and just use the, um, like if I want them to be dark black or, or have some kind of shades to them, you can actually turn on the material color itself. Um, uh, so that way you can have... Uh, different types of materials hit these things along with RGB. It's up to you. Um, so, let's say if I want to have like this kind of like a textured metal on certain pieces as a base, I could do that. Or I could just say, you know, I want to have it to be kind of shiny, have some of the material hits to it, but then do it go into RGB. I want it to be gold, you know what I mean? That's going to capture. Maybe. Um, maybe just this one piece I mean and then I can go okay color fill object so then when I switch over to a different one I now have that gold into it and I might say this one's gonna have um, the chrome because it's gonna be I mean let's see reflected foil okay I 
think I'm going to have that for my eyes. This color right here, fill object. And let's go back over to here. Okay. I'm going to go back into paint. So right there, you can kind of have this sort of fleshed out. This one, if you don't like the material, turn it back off. And then, you know, you pick a color and you can start painting. Make sure your Z adds off intensity. Let's just darken it down. So you can have that material hit, but you can darken these things down a little bit more. Now here, if I did that same thing, it's pick up the material, but it's not necessarily going to do, uh, do exactly um, this color. Now, if I want to bring in this material along onto this other one that's already there, the problem is, is it doesn't always, uh, it kind of pixelates. So you have a lot of like pixel funkiness happening to that piece. And um, so, like if I turn on the material along with RGB and I go back to this material which was reflected, and if I draw on here, once I get onto that object, you can see the pixel breakdown, right? Now you might be able to hide some of it within that little separation. It's not always easy. You can try to say I want this one piece. Um, but what would be easier for me to do is just to go ahead and take that little section right there, this separated piece, and make it its own polygroup, its own subtool, rather than trying to Let's just say. These are some tricks that you can. Uh, again, I'm just concepting, right? I'm just kind of playing around with color. Um, you know, as you can see right there, it's sort of working, sort of not. Um, and who knows? Maybe these screws now have to be a little bit lighter color. I might just say from these screws, just going to go color, make sure I'm on material, and say fill object. Oops, I meant to do it on the uh, color, fill object. And what it's doing is just wiping out the material. Switch back over, and then when you go to whatever material, you can then add some some color to them, but not too extreme. That way you can kind of paint and say, I want not purple, you know, the screws on the inside to be kind of dark. Then you can go add some highlights to the screws. So this is how I usually like to paint. I just like to poly paint so I can add in those details to make them a little more believable. So if you kind of say, all right, I don't like that. Go down to your flat color, make sure your material's on 100% color, fill that object. Okay? Color, fill that object. Okay. So, as you can see right there, I have some the RGB into it. So, if I decide I want this to be the uniform color, then I could just go color, fill that object. And all I'm doing is I'm picking up just the material. Um, not the material, I'm just picking up the color that I want, which is what I like to stay with. So let's get to this guy. I'm going to probably start off with kind of a warm brown color. Let's just fill this object. And then I'm going to probably start picking up more towards like the um, some of the blues, pinks. Um, I'm going to go to my alpha. And I like to just go to like a, a general, hold on, let me just kind of get off 100. And I'm just going to intermix a few different areas of the blues. Let's pick this back up. I'm going to go more into the warm flesh tones. Again, if it's too much, you know, pull it back and... Um, intensity because I want to have some of those colors underneath I want him to be a little bit translucent 
and I'm going to bring in some purples and some lights and then kind of play with them. Is there any questions? Is everybody still here? Did I lose you? Oh, I really must have lost you guys. Anybody? Bueller? Ah, holy crap. That was my fault again. Uh, thank you, Sassin. <laughs> Sits are poison. In other words, teenagers. Good. Oh, wow, I missed a lot of stuff. Is there a way to make it so... Hey, I'm back. Uh, <laughs> is there a way to make it so you rotate it completely off? It has rock-oriented line of the painting so you can see through the function, but occasionally I can click outside the object. Are you talking pro about the gizmo? Thank you, Dark. I appreciate it. I mean, this is just, you know, like, if I don't like some of the things in this character, I could always use it parts of it. And that's the great thing about ZBrush is I can kind of pull things back again and reuse, reuse the pieces for different concepts or um, storylines. You know, I mean? that's what I love about this. Now I'm just picking up some of the different colors. I'm going to probably go to a little bit more pink just to bring in some warmth, some purples. And then oh, saving cameras. Yeah, usually I have a tendency I don't really mess around with cameras. I just kind of keep flopping around. And no, I don't have nightmares actually. I don't, I don't dream very much at all. It's kind of weird. I think my wife dreams enough for both of us. I get in trouble a lot in those dreams. So now I'm kind of just slightly bringing up some highlights and mixing those. And I'm being very fast. I don't know if you guys noticed this. I'm just kind of swapping them down really quickly, building up slowly, um, and then just jumping different lines. I might bring in a little bit more of the purples. And what this does is going to help me kind of give that more alien. Not not like some of the characters I've done where they've been a lot purple. I want to kind of keep this to flesh tone. And I'm probably going to get a little bit more of a blue teal, which I don't like teal. But I'm going to kind of probably help me um, help highlight some of that skin. So maybe his internal, instead of blood, he's got kind of... Instead of red, it's more of um, like uh, some of those characters from Alita had blue blood. You know what I mean? So maybe we help to find that the, um, the blood in those characters were blue. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's kind of pick a teal. I'm going to turn off my stroke. And let's define out some of these regions. So if I'm going to kind of say, all right, he bled through his nose, right? So he's got a little bit of that blue tinge coming from that and of course if he has his lips are going to be probably very the, the more translucent so let's make that a little bit blue okay, and some of the eye socket and he's got kind of like did two different iris levels here's eyelids level so let's go ahead and blue that out in the inner okay i'm not liking those pieces so i'm going to take those out for the moment Gonna blue this up just a. And I had a little bit of my alpha kind of hitting this area, so I just hit some smooth. So I'm smoothing out the color, and I'm also smoothing out this, the the sculpt. So if I don't want to smooth out any of the sculpt, I just turn off. When I hit uh, shift, I just turn off the additive. Okay. And let's get some blue here. Good. Glad you answered that, pro. Yes, uh, Adrian, I, I kind of use this as my base for all my skins. It has a little bit of a bluish um, hint to it, which I kind of like. Um, 
just feels kind of natural for me. And it's got a good illumination. It's not too overly sheened. And it's kind of, you know, got some interesting shapes. Uh, I, you know, because it's like if I change this, that totally changes the color and the feel and everything else. So you can go through in your character. So this is a great test as well, too. If you're having trouble figuring out what is a good color for my character or my creature, you're trying to find some base skin tones. If Even if you have poly paint on to it, it's going to transfer to a lot of different materials. So if I switch over to the sketch, it's going to be... It's going to give me a different feel to it entirely. Um, they're, they're, this one's very flat. It doesn't have any kind of sheen. Um, if I want to bring in a little bit more red, you can kind of take a look at it. All of a sudden, he feels like he's totally different. Um, if he goes more red, you know, and then and then once you have this material onto it, it's going to be a lot harder to pull out some of the poly paint. But what you could do is you could just find something that is a, a good mix. Um, so this really is, is smack in my face. Um, it's very blown out. Board and cool has a little bit more of that cool aspect to it, um, and again, like the you just kind of try to find the different skins that work for you. So um, I personally, you know, I mean this one like it's super wet. <laughs> you know, I can't see what the hell's going on. You know, that's even more wet. So you got different ones that um, will change the sheen. I personally like this one. So. I get used to it. And now that I've looked at a whole bunch of different ones, it was kind of getting my, um, kind of being overdone. So let me go ahead and keep, let me darken down some of these. I think that it's going to be, I want to probably make this all one uniform helmet. Um, And then I'll let me add some painting scratches, some highlights, just to add a little bit of life to it. Some edges. So that way I'm kind of faking in those highlights, I'm faking in the detail. I don't think I'm going to give them racing stripes, guys, but... Um, just something to kind of and then who knows this might be a little bit more So I'm separating by the color, which really kind of helps. I'm gonna because I'm in a different color. I'm gonna highlight that, picking it up into the higher whites. Just to add some detail and to help separate and some of the white line. And just because I had um, this be a little bit darker, if I want to go ahead and make this piece lighter, I'm just going to do color fill object. But I'm going to reduce the intensity down just to slowly see what I like. Okay, Not too much, not too little. And then I could use that color to change Instead of that material, now that I can blend in, I'm going to go ahead and just separate this piece of metal. Sort of like this section right here is a little bit over top. Um, let me go ahead and hide that, make it a little bit easier to blend. And this is where I am concepting color as well as the character itself, because, you know, what's going to be believable, what's not, um, doesn't make sense. Now, I could have masked this out as well. I could have said, um, 
mask and then flip it and then just fill straight like that. Um, I'm trying to, the reason I didn't go about it that way is I wanted to sit there and just have some scratches or have some variation in the metal to make it a little bit more believable. Like it's been sort of damaged, it's not clean. So. That makes sense to you guys. And then I'm going to highlight these two levels. Oops. That's me hitting that little thing again. Now, right now I'm at half a mil. I'm going to go up one more level just to help on the poly paint because the details were kind of getting lost. So, Switching the piece. Okay. Let's go ahead and add some variation in the metal. to the skin. I'll probably keep that. Let's bring up the intensity. It's kind of low. Any questions, guys? So I'm going to probably go a little bit more to the teal as well to do the highlights on the teal pieces. Not that much. Way too much. And then this is where I'll get some of the line work or detail work into the character. Some highlights, some sections of the eyes. Have you ever had a bug or change settings that when you click on it, and rename so until the bar pops up, but you can't click on it? Um, no, you have to hit enter. Like, if I'm going to change, you're talking about when you go to where the hell's my um, rename? I just you can't. You're saying I can't change that one. Um, a lot of times I hit that end arrow and then I can just change, I can move it back to say that 
Um, that's how some because it looks like sometimes it just you can't con connect it. So I always hit the back the little the arrow to go to the end of the and then uh, that seems to. Um, I've had that slightly before. I don't know if it's that exact same thing you're talking about though. Yeah, don't hit enter. Uh, just hit the little arrow key um, and go to the end of it and then try that way. Because a lot of times it's not knowing what to do, I think, and you haven't given it any kind of new instructions. So that's why it's not doing anything quite yet. I think that's what's happening. Is there a possible setup with two or more lights at the same time for BPR? You can create your own Adrian. There's different materials. That's all they are is the different lighting scenes in HDR. You know, the they're making a fake H HDRI. Um, it's not like a true key shot kind of stuff. But you can make up your own as many lights as you want. That's where the material, every single time I change, it's a different feel. Uh, the lighting, if you open up the, the lights, it's going to change. The materials getting a lot of different information. So these are you know, the true um, things. This is kind of like a faux. Okay, so let me let me go ahead and pose this guy really quickly since I haven't shown that in a couple different episodes. Then i got to go pick out my little one. But um, you guys, uh, you know, like this is a sketch. This is where I would kind of play, like, you know, um, She kind of had a roughness to it, like chalk. Let's see if I can get that chalk feel. There you go, number 99. Just joking, there can only be one Alita. Okay, so now that I had that character pretty much done, I might change his, let's see what his eyes are kind of bothering me, so fill object, let me go to toy plastic color, fill object, and I think I just will probably keep it. That's right. So, <laughs> no, it's just it's weird, Zasin. Uh, you just kind of have to, you know, it's it's when you click on it, the name is already kind of it says names there. So when you hit enter, it's what it's doing is saying, well, that's the name you already give it. So it's waiting for your action. So you, if you type in, you know, um, eyes. Then hit enter, then it will kind of, you know, register that you've made a, a function, you made an action. So that's pretty much why I think it's happening. So, okay, let me go ahead and I think I'm going to add a little bit of tinge to. I want to be an RGB, not material. Okay. All I'm doing is I'm just kind of blueing up a few of the different sections here. So So let's say I'm happy with that, which I'm not, but still, <laughs> I'm going to get on to something else. I'll highlight this a little bit more. I'm 
trying to bring out some of the um, some of the edges feel a little bit dull, so I'm trying to highlight some of the attention. I want I want your eye to kind of look at specific things, so I need to kind of help to find that out. Like maybe a little mouth section front here and underneath, and the chin. I think I'm going to go to darken the lips just a little bit more. So now I'm just moving it around with color. I'm taking a look at some of the areas that are kind of bothersome to me. Um, before I do the final because once I once I did the posing it's um, it's posed so you kind of want to make sure before you get to that point you're happy with what you see and now I'm just going back into sculpting just a few of these portions now that I got some of that color on there as well to help me showcase the areas that I want instead of using that alpha I'm just sketching in some of lines, details, etc. RGB on this as well, which is fine. Because I'm gonna clean that up. I think there was just too much detail around. I need to relax some of the area, meaning that it was just um, if your eye has nothing to like relax on, and you're trying to have it go to a specific point of interest, and it's too busy you kind of lose some of that. So I'm trying to define out some of this form. Okay. I'll probably play with this a little bit more, continue with this character a little bit more to kind of try to just fix some of the areas that are still bothering me, but I think for the demo, it's good. Hopefully I taught you guys a few different things. So before let me I let you guys go. Let me pose. Okay. So I'm gonna tool save. I always um, save this sucker right before I pose. So I'm just gonna create, you know, another version save. Well um you know, and because the, the thing is, like, when you show your work just like this, here's my concept, here's my, you know, story, here's everything, part of my character, or whatever you're going to be creating. If it doesn't have any life, it's very difficult to breathe, you know, for that creation to come to life. So just adding a little bit of that asymmetry, adding a little bit more of that extra, like, you know, um, on this character, I might kind of go, you know what, he doesn't have enough asymmetry, so he's got a big damn scar that cuts across his face because he's been in battle, you know, whatever. Um, or, you know, he might... Um, have a little bit of um, different coloration where he's you know got a got a spot coming over his eye like that that dog or whatever you you, you kind of think of okay I have the asymmetry I'm done in sculpt and everything and this is where it gets to the fact that you need to have some of the posing done to add a little bit more towards that. So I'm going to get rid of a few of these pieces that I am not using. Like, I'm not using the racing stripes. I don't think that kind of works. Um, and I 
don't think I need them as, you know, antennas or whatever. Um, yeah, not liking that, so I'm going to delete those out. Okay, so I have my objects. Uh, you can, before you go to sit there and pose, uh, go ahead and this, this button called All Low and take a look at your polyframes. Now this right here isn't, isn't reduced. Everything else has been reduced, except for the eyes. Um, I'm not going to be posing drastically, but the higher the level that those pieces are, the more it's going to bog down your computer when you're posing. But I think it's fine for how it is. So I'm going to go to my transform, uh, my Z plugin um, below the subtool master called transpose master. I'm just going to say T pose mesh. It's going to go through all those different subtools, combine them into one, and give you the version, the lowest version possible. Um, I'm going to switch back over to my sculpt so you can actually see. And I'm just going to change it like, okay, he's racing, right? So I'm probably going to bring his um, head forward. I'm going to go to my mask. I'm going to hold down control um, and go to my mask lasso. And I'm just going to lasso out his next section. And I'm going to hold down control and just click. And that way I can then pose. Now, this object right here is... Um, equal. My dynamic is not on. I'm fine with that. I'm going to kind of bring it into like this is his neck. So I'm going to probably bring him forward just a little bit like he's kind of racing. Um, if I need to bring that up a little bit more. Okay. And I'm going to click off and I'm going to bring this gizmo. I'm holding down Alt. You see the little lock kind of undo. If I let go of that, I'm moving the neck. Okay. Um, and I'm going to kind of turn to give him just a little bit of forward thrust, not scale, and turn. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm going to kind of have him like he's doing that little skating. As an artist, animators do this a lot. You need to figure out your pose. You got to figure out how your hands go. You can take some pictures of your characters. If you're not going to do any major poses, it's not necessary. But taking snapshots of your things and thinking about your final presentation is is key. So I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to act it out to be a fool because I'm on tape. But <laughs> you kind of want to figure out like how how is the race? If you if you had arms, you know what's going to go. Um, uh, to the back, you know, I'm gonna, but of course, if you notice, when I move my shoulders and my arms and stuff like that, my head twists and I'm trying to keep a look. So, this is what you want to sit there with in your pose and you're figuring out. So, I want him to kind of like, he's leaning into the corner, or he's coming down, he's twisting his body, um, pushing back. I'm going to kind of click and then I'm switching. And I'm going to kind of turn his head up and back. So, I'm kind of doing that little pose a little bit. Give a little bit to where he might have his neck up. And even though I'm in this little pose, I still can sculpt. So I want to sit there and sculpt. All right. I want to bring the neck up a little bit more, or the, the head up a little bit more. So I'm going to define it, the, the, the masking, and I'm going to take a look at it. And I can even sit there and say, you know what, I'm going to... his jaw kind of clenching and up and if I want to have a little bit more towards um, now with the the gizmo hold down alt and you can click the little recycle that will bring it back to sort of you know the not the center necessarily, but it's changing it because I want to kind of slightly turn the head just a little bit more, even if it's angle. Now these are all different poly groups, so what you could do too is you can hold down Control and Shift, and you can grab that poly group and mask it, and poly group and mask it, poly group, mask it. Okay. So what I'm doing is you know I'm just trying to grab the character. You can. Um, you could have done it the other way too, but but let's say I want to I want to make it to where he's going so fast, 
you know, that helmet's just kind of flying back. I mean, you know, <laughs> you could exaggerate. I'm just, I'm joking around, but it's like you can actually give a little bit extra change or, or pull um, to the character, okay? Let's turn on the dynamic to figure out if I like that pose or not. You're taking a look at it. And when you're happy with this, you know, like let's say maybe I, I don't want that neck quite as much. Maybe I got a little bit exaggerated, a um, little bit too intense with it. You know, I could still have a little bit of turn done. When I'm happy with whatever I've done, be careful. You can append tools, you know what I mean? You can bring in certain tools. Um, uh, like a lot of times what I'll do, um, a ring's not a good one. So if I append in a cube, Okay, and let's say this cube was going to be the floor, you know what I mean, of where this object's standing or whatever. Um, so if you're like, you have the character has his feet planted, you're trying to figure out what's a good thing in the, or how to interact with different objects in your scene, um, be aware that you have to delete that object that you brought in before you try to bring the pose back out of, uh, back into T-Pose Master. Because that took everything, every single sub-tool that was active by the eye and it broke it down to the lower level and combined it into one mesh. And so if you bring in any extra additive or whatever, or if I deleted out this little head, it's going to have problems. So I'm going to go to T-Pose Mesh. I'm going to extract it back out. Boom, boom. Cross the fingers. <laughs> Make sure you didn't do anything. Done. And there is my posed character, OK? That kind of brings it a little bit more towards, you know, being kind of interesting, a little bit more towards, okay, that's, he's got some attitude, he's inquisitive, however you want to do it. Um, that's one way. So let's see if I'm going to. So here is my character. I'm doing Control Z. Um, I lost my pose, um, that meaning, so let me see. So here's my combined object. Let's go back to here. I'm going to say tool, save as, and then I always do you know, the whatever object posed. And that way I know this one's completed. Um, and then that way I can bring in my previous guy. That's my non-pose. Turn off my object. Let's go ahead and click. Uh, if you're ever wanting to have, uh, and, you know, all the sub sub tools by preference by default. The inactive sub tool domain is down, so um, if you don't want that, if you want to kind of take a look at everything by itself, you can just do that. And there's the demo, guys. I think that's uh, it for today. If you guys have any kind of questions, um, please drop me a line. You know, like and check me out on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. I definitely appreciate the support and help. So um, let me double check before I let you guys go. Let me see. Um, let me see. Enjoy the stream. Thank you very much, Dark. I appreciate it. Adrian, you're more than welcome. Glad to hear it. Um, let me see. Thanks for the help. Error I get is every subtool must contain at least two letters. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can use any kind of like weird things. Um, Possessing, uh, you might have to just kind of add three, whatever. Bruno, thank you. Let's see, yeah, Derry. Uh, this is kind of. I'm, I'm glad they've been a great family to me over the years. So I'm glad to help them out. Um, we do this because we, you know, love giving back to our community and stuff. So, and Pixel Logic's honestly great for this. So, I'm glad to hear it. Dark, check them out. I have 18 now. So uh, I was only supposed to do a few of them, but um, this kind of pushes me to create crap. So, <laughs> and honestly, I, I hate poly painting, so it's actually really pushed me as poly painting. I'm actually liking it a lot better. Yep, check out ZBrush 2019 comes out March 5th. You guys got to do and check that out. It's got some really neat things. Thank you, Adrian. Side effects, appreciate it, man. Pro, thank you very much. Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm not working on the fake alien invasion. I have tons of aliens that are coming if they ever need any, though. So, you know, appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks again, guys, everything. And um, 
Oh, how did you copy the model? Oh, what I did, Adrian, is I, I did a snapshot. Uh, so control, so right now there is this object floating. If I hold down control, shift, um, then that's gonna make a snapshot. I'm sorry, control, um, sorry, control S. Say, holy crap, I just forgot. Control shift snap. Uh, <laughs> I totally, I am totally, I was just doing it. Um, shift S. <laughs> Sorry. I was saving, so I was, uh, and then that way you can kind of rotate it and check it out and, and do different pieces or whatever. So, and if you don't want to, don't want to show anything, you just kind of throw it off to the side, because this is, this is my 3D object. Those are the snapshots and stuff, so. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Stumped me there for a second, so shift S, thanks. <laughs> a little late. A little late, though, no, but uh, yeah, drop me a line, guys, anytime. Happy to help, and um, and uh, have a good one. I'll probably be on in a couple weeks. I'm going to probably do this every two weeks, if you guys don't mind joining. Um, and I'm probably going to be start doing some of my own um, streaming, just when I'm kind of bored and I'm not scheduled, I'll just pop online and then uh, in case anybody just wants to have a jam. I'm trying to get some of the different professionals to get together to do stuff like that and some more too. So, but uh, all right, you guys. Thank you very much for joining and I'll see you guys next time.